Welcome to the Friendly Auto Show. I'm Susan Langhai and spring is in the air. Today we'll be talking with Chief Meteorologist Cheryl Lemke from our very own News Channel 20 in Fox, Illinois about preparing for warmer weather. We'll also be joined by John Kelker, President of United Way of Central Illinois, as we discuss ways you can spring into action through volunteer programs. All that and more is coming up next on the Friendly Auto Show. pleasure to have Cheryl Lemke, Chief Meteorologist from our own News Channel 20 in Fox, Illinois with me today. Hi Cheryl. Hey Susan, what a pleasure to meet you actually in person now. Yeah, it's great to see you too. <laughs> it's, it's it's so exciting. We're, we're always interested in the weather. We're moving into spring and we have um, April showers and so forth and we rely so much on you and you are um, the voice and uh, uh, the weather here in our area. Mm -hmm. Tell us, what, what got you interested in, in becoming a meteorologist? Well, truth be told, Susan, um, ever since I was a kid, I was always fascinated by science and the weather. And I remember so many times growing up in Omaha, Nebraska, we'd sit out with our family, we'd be out in the back porch watching storms roll into town, and just to see the lightning display and the lightning dancing across the sky, it was something always intriguing for me. I was always interested in why why things behave the way they do, why things work the way they do. And so to actually become a, a meteorologist, it kind of made sense. And I have to admit, this is some this is a job, I don't consider it just a job, it's a career. It's something that I really am very passionate about. I really love what I do. And I really think it's a blessing to get up every day to go to a job and do something that I love doing. And I really couldn't see myself doing anything other than being a broadcast meteorologist because I love it so much. Well, it's, it's very apparent when you're on TV and when we all watch you. <laughs> you came to Springfield um, with the station a little over two years ago. Yeah, I started in December 2015. It really seems like time has flown by. I can't believe it's been over two years now. But um, prior to coming to Springfield, though, I had worked for a while in Omaha, Nebraska, which is my hometown. But I also worked, too, as the interim chief meteorologist in South Bend, Indiana. And then, actually, my first job in broadcasting, though, was in Terre Haute, Indiana. So I do have some strong Midwest, Midwest roots. Mm -hmm. But really, the majority of my career was spent working at the Weather Channel. Um, I was at the Weather Channel from um, 1986 till 2008. So it was over 22 years um, of my life was spent working at the Weather Channel. A great experience. I mean, there's a great group of people there. Um, it was a good melting pot. Everybody was a meteorologist, so there's all these great minds coming together. We had state-of-the-art equipment, and during that time span, we really covered all kinds of weather phenomena, from landfalling hurricanes like Hurricane Katrina to landfalling typhoons. We would cover not only national weather, but also international weather, too. 
and we did nor'easters, major blizzards, ice storms, tornadoes. I mean, you name it, we covered it all. So it was a great learning experience the time that I was at the Weather Channel. But then coming here too, I mean, this is a great time opportunity for me to be here in Springfield because, of course, my family is from the Midwest, and so to get back to my Midwest roots, it's very important to me. So I love my time here in Springfield as well. That's great. Well, you brought a lot, a lot of experience with you mm -hmm. here. Let's talk about your typical day. We, it's just not on TV when we watch you. I mean, that yeah. there's so much prep involved. Can you give us a little rundown of just your typical day? I think people are going to be really surprised to know that. I mean, it's a 30-minute newscast of that time span. Maybe weather's two, three minutes long tops. So you might think, oh, she can put that together in just a real, you know, snap of the finger. But it takes a lot of prep work involved just to even get to that point. Um, typically, my day at at, at work, I'm usually there about one o'clock or so in the afternoon, one to about 1.30. I usually leave about 11 o'clock, but even before I even come into work though, there's a lot of prep work involved. As soon as I get up in the mornings, I usually turn on the computer, looking at different computer models, seeing what's going on, and really perusing the weather and really getting a good grasp as to what the forecast is gonna be for that day and for the next few days out. So there's a lot of prep work involved. And nowadays too, especially with the computer graphics, it takes a while to kind of build those graphics and kind of build your show into a sequence with computers. I mean, when I first started being in broadcasting, we just had a giant metal board behind me and we put up <laughs> smiling suns and cold fronts and warm fronts, very easy. We had two newscasts, a six o'clock and a 10 o'clock news, that was it. Nowadays, we have social media, Facebook, Twitter, and we've got all this other stuff that, we, that we're responsible for, doing radio broadcasts and radio forecasts. So a lot of different prep work involved, so I mean, it may be, you know, by the books might be an eight hour day, but really it might be 10 or 12 hours just preparing to do what you have to do during the course of the day. So it's it's a very busy weather schedule. It, it sounds just like you're so busy. <laughs> and then plus with your forecasts um, versus like the news reporters, mm -hmm. You're totally ad lib. This that, is not a, a teleprompter where you're reading and yeah. just and you're at lib and you're at the mercy of all the the little clicker thing working correctly and everything and yeah. keeping your mind focused <laughs> and um, tell me about that. It's like being a juggler trying to get all these balls in the air at the same time. But there's a lot of things that you have to keep your mind straight. Um, unlike the news people and the sports people that might have all their what they're saying might be all scripted out. It's on a, what they call a teleprompter. That's not true for the weather people. It is totally ad lib. And the worst feeling is like when you get out there and you're right in the middle of a sentence and you kind of forget where you're going to go with that the rest of your thoughts. So <laughs> that's scary, but it's happened to all of us. And, you know, even the most uh, experienced people, it happens at one time or another. So we just, we're just used to it. But it's totally ad lib. So it's kind of a crazy thing. And again, we're also the victim of circumstances. Sometimes the computers don't behave the way that we expect them to. You're pressing the button to advance your frames, your graphics, and sometimes they don't work. So it's a very interesting thing. You just have to learn to be quick on your feet because you just never know what can happen during the course of a newscast. Absolutely. So you, you're really good at going with the flow mm -hmm. and just, as you said, thinking on your feet and um, Oh, it, it just sounds so exciting. Tell me about um, your most rewarding time on TV or what, what, what uh, weather mm -hmm. uh, circumstance did you cover that you're just most proud of? Um, I think one of the things that I really enjoy as a whole, though, being a broadcast meteorologist, I think it's very empowering for people to have information about what kind of weather to expect because I feel it's our responsibility to make sure that we have the most accurate forecast that we can. And especially if there's impending severe weather that might be coming our way, we wanna really give people a heads up. They can make take the measures and the safeguard, what they can do to help safeguard their family and their property in case there is some impending severe weather that could be coming our way. So I think it's very important as a broadcast meteorologist to always get the best information out there so that people could be properly prepared. So I think it's empowering for viewers to watch and it's like, you know, they know what to expect. They shouldn't be caught off guard because we've, we're giving them a heads up, a notice as to what could be happening, what could be coming their way. What do you do about the person that had a golf game planned on Saturday and then it was supposed to be sunny and inevitably it rains? I mean, you, you have to take a little bit of wrath, I'm sure, yeah. social media wise. And it's absolutely not your, your fault at all. How do, how do you deal with those it's little so comments? Those it's so funny because um, even though meteorology, or at least the field of meteorology and the, the science of it has really changed over the course of the years, we're getting more and more computer models, and these models come out with maybe four different times during the day that they'll be up making updates. So we have so much information to really ingest and try to come up with the best forecast that we can. 
But having said that, even though we've had some great advancements over the last few decades or so, it's still a very inexact science. So even though we say it might be raining on Saturday and maybe it's going to be sunny or the, you know, the other way around, you know, things like that happen. And you just have to kind of take it with a grain of salt because, like I tell folks, I'm always trying to do my best, you know, and, you know, you know, sometimes the best of inten intentions, but sometimes it still doesn't play out the way that you'd like it to. But, um, you know, we just try to do the best that right. we can. Right, and, and you do. You, you're just fabulous, Cheryl. Oh, well, we you. really, um, it's, it's so great to have you here in Springfield, mm -hmm. and we appreciate the what you do for us and the weather reports that you give, and you're just just wonderful, and it's so nice to have you here, and it's nice to have you on Thank the you. Friendly Thank Auto you. Show. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Friendly Auto Show. My name is John McLaughlin, pre-owned sales manager at Friendly Chevrolet and we have got a great pre-owned segment for you today. We have a good selection of not just Chevys but all the other makes and models we carry. We're going to go over a few of them today. You can always shop us online at susansautomall.com. Without further ado, let's check them out. Starting the show today, we have a fresh trade. This is a 2014 Mini Cooper Countryman S. This vehicle is loaded, leather interior, heated seats, alloy wheels, fog lights, panoramic moonroof, it's got it all. Only 24,000 miles, was $17,990, sale price at $15,336. This is a 2013 Hyundai Elantra. This vehicle is loaded with moonroof, leather interior, alloy wheels, fresh local trade, for $98.78. That's right, under $10,000 for all of this car. Come see this one. Here is a gorgeous certified pre-owned 2014 Chevrolet Impala. This vehicle has every option imaginable. 20 inch alloy wheels, adaptive cruise control, heated and cooled seats, panoramic moonroof, Navigation, only 45,000 miles, was $23,990. Sale price is $21,084. Start your summer off right in this 2015 Dodge Challenger. Yeah, it's got a Hemi. It's also got low miles, alloy wheels, leather, and a moonroof. Was $33,560. Sale price is $28,307. Don't miss this one. We are Central Illinois' largest certified pre-owned headquarters. Here we have a 2015 GMC Acadia. This vehicle is loaded with leather, heated and cooled seats, panoramic moonroof, chrome wheels, 172 point inspection. You get two years of scheduled maintenance with this vehicle and a 12 month, 12,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty. This vehicle was $33,990. It's on sale for $31,637. Come out and see us. We have yet another certified pre-owned vehicle. This one is a 2015 Chevrolet Traverse. Bring the family along with you in this one. Third row seating, alloy wheels, fog lights, loaded. It's an LT model. Was $24,990. Sale priced at $22,564. Here we have a rare 2015 Chevrolet Colorado Crew Cab Midnight Edition. Low mileage, only 7,600 miles on this vehicle. With the certified pre-owned, you get more warranty than you would a new car. Come see this vehicle. You don't want to miss it. Was $28,560. We've got it sale priced at $26,990. We have a great selection of trucks at Friendly Chevrolet, and they're not all Chevys. Here we have a 2015 Ford F-150 Lariat EcoBoost. Chrome wheels, running boards, camper shell, beautiful color, fresh out of service. Was $33,990, friendly Chevrolet sale price $31,458. Here's one of the many certified pre-owned Chevy Silverados we have here on the lot. This one's a 2017 Chevy Silverado Crew Cab LT. It's got a bed liner, tow package, chrome wheels, fog lights. It's got it all. Vehicle was $32,990, friendly Chevrolet sale price $29,404. You're going to want to be seen in this beautiful 2016 Chevrolet Silverado. It's a crew cab Z71 four-wheel drive loaded with 20-inch wheels, painted grille and bumpers, tow hooks, blacked out emblems. It's got it all. Bed liner. Was $35,990. Friendly Chevrolet sale price $33,348. Thanks, John.
around. Well, you see what friendly Chevrolet right next door had to offer? Here at Honda of Illinois, I've personally handpicked 10 pre-owns marked way down below NADA, folks. This is a short sampling of what we have to offer. Come out and see us. We won't lose the deal to anybody. All right, ladies and gentlemen, first up, we have a 2012 Honda Pilot EX package. Windows locks, tilt, cruise air, automatic, very, very nice. Local one owner trade-in. That car was $18,990. Here at Susan's Auto Mall, we've got it reduced all the way down to $17,477. All right, guys, here's a luxury car at its finest. This is a Audi Q5, 15,000 miles. Every amenity you could ask for, panoramic roof, halogen lights, alloy wheels, weather, on and on and on. Guys, NADA on that car is almost $37,000. Here at Susan's Auto Mall, we've got it marked down to $34,777. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here is a 2018 Honda CRV SUV of the year. This is the touring package to get you the leather, the heated seats, the roof, the navigation, the wheels, all wheel drive. This is a certified pre-owned Honda. Only place you can buy one is here at Susan's Auto Mall. That car was over $35,000. We've got it reduced all the way down to $33,977. All right, folks, here's a nice low payment car. This is a 2014 Chevy Malibu LS package. That car was $11,490. We've got it marked all the way down to $97,77. Windows locks, tilt, cruise air, Bluetooth, alloy wheels. Come check it out. It won't last long. All right, folks, here's another Honda certified pre-owned. This is a 2013 EXL package. Leather, roof, wheels, heated seats, on and on and on. Guys, that car was marked at $18,290. Here at Susan's Auto Mall, we've got it marked all the way down to $17,277. Come see it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's a fun little spring and summer car. This is a 2016 Volkswagen Beetle. This is the Dune package which gives you some nice amenities inside, the wheels, the sport striping, the halogen headlamps, touch screen. Guys, that car was marked at $19,990. Here at Susan's Auto Mall, we've got it reduced all the way down to $18,777. Okay, next up, we have a 2016 Ford F-150. This is the Sport Package XLT trim, EcoBoost, so you're gonna save on fuel but you're not gonna sacrifice on power. Extended cab, backup camera, windows locks, tilt cruise air, alloy wheels, running boards, bed liner. That car was 26,880. Got it marked all the way down to 24,977. Okay, folks, here's a nice car. Next up, we have a 2016 Hyundai Santa Fe. Has all the amenities, halogen lamps, wheels, leather, heated seats, backup camera. That car was almost $28,000. Here at Susan's Auto Mall, we've got it marked all the way down to $25,777. Come see it. All right, this one's all ready for that summer vacation, folks. Here's a 2016 Honda Odyssey SE package. It's got all the goodies inside, rear entertainment, alloy wheels, only 14,000 miles. That car was almost $29,000. Here at Susan's Auto Mall, we got it marked down to $26,777. All right, folks, last up, we have a 2015 Honda CRV EXL package, leather, roof, wheels, windows, locks, tilt, cruise, Bluetooth, on and on. Folks, that car was marked at almost $25,000. Here at Susan's Auto Mall, we got it marked all the way down to $22,477. Welcome back. I'm here with John Kelker, President of the United Way of Central Illinois. So great to have you on the show again, John. Thank you for having me back. It's, I, I, I want to say it's a busy time for you, but if I was here you know, three months from now, it's a busy time for you. It's always busy. Tell me what's going on. It is busy. We are just wrapping up our 2017 campaign. Val and Chris Butler were this year's campaign chairs, and we are very appreciative of their work. We have volunteers already working and evaluating programs because we'll make funding decisions um, in late spring. And speaking of those volunteers, we're gearing up for our day of action. We have a day of action coming up on May 4th and 5th. 
that is a big, big weekend for you. Let's, for viewers watching who may not be familiar with your day of action, or tell us about it, about that. Twice a year, spring and fall, we have a day of action where community volunteers take on projects at non-for-profit organizations in our community. Last year, almost 400 volunteers participated. Anywhere from when I think of springtime, it's spring cleanup, it's gardening, painting inside and out. These are the kind of things agencies oftentimes can't do, but directly with clients, preparing and serving food to clients, assisting children with craft projects. Um, it's a hands-on opportunity. You don't need a social service background. Um, you don't need strong muscles for some of the work. It's just a great way to get engaged with other people and a lot of workplaces bring their entire groups together. So as you said, a lot of businesses come together as a, a group and it's it's a nice um, uh, nice teamwork building opportunity, yet you're really giving so much to these organizations. As you said, you could be painting, uh, you could be stocking shelves. Tell us, how do you match uh, the volunteer with the job? Mitch Baker on my staff is responsible for doing that, and it's a combination of, is it all women? And if so, we're not going to do some of the heavy lifting things. Um, if it's a group from perhaps one of our engineering firms and they want to roll their sleeves up and have some access to tools, we can do that. Mm -hmm. um, we're very careful with the project. We don't do anything that's dangerous. We're not going to put volunteers in that way. Um, and what we do try and do is change up volunteers. If, if a group from Wells Fargo has been at the Red Cross, we're going to encourage them and match them with another agency so that they get to see the diversity of services in the community. That's a fabulous idea. For uh, people watching right now say, gosh, that's, I want to do that uh, as an individual or as a group. How do they get involved and who, who do they call or how do Easiest they register? Easiest way, certainly can call our office at 726-7000 or you can text ACTION18 to 50503. Wow, that, you're making it super easy, aren't you, John? <laughs> we want to do that. They'll get information about Day of Action. They'll understand how to register. They'll also get information for the event that's going to happen September 14th and 15th. And that is another day. Yeah, another, that'll be in the fall. In the fall. So you have spring and fall. You can one or one or all, right? We're both. We, yeah. <laughs> one Nothing or all. wrong with both. No, that's, that's great. For somebody watching who says, oh my gosh, I'm going to be out of town those two days in May, or so is there something else that they can do to help? Is there any kind of um, monetary gifts they could give in place? We, we are always accepting gifts. We, it, campaigning is now a year-round effort in mm -hmm. supporting social services so they can go to our website you can always make a gift whether it's a one-time or establish something through a credit card or banking where you're making an annual gift to us that is at springfieldunitedway.org excuse me they can find information is it best for them to go through the united way or if somebody says boy i want to um, I, I really uh, have a connection with a particular organization are they can they go to your organization and say I, I'd like some of my funds to go to this or do you or is that more where you, your committee picks the who, where the funds fall? we 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 are about the community fund last year we would have allocated about 1.6 million dollars to programs that we've evaluated for for best practices but we do allow donors to direct their gifts to any not-for-profit organization. We've been an open choice United Way for years. Nice. If they know specifically the agency they want to support and they have the capacity, we would encourage them to support them directly. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have the capacity for that one-time gift, through the workplace, payroll deduction allows you to increase your support of a charity. And it does give you the opportunity to say, I want to support this charity and United Way's good work. You can switch your gift. That's great. That's fabulous. Well, I know you you do so much good in this community, John. You've been around. How long have you been the president of the United Way? I am in my 22nd year serving this oh, community. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And as you said, this isn't your father or grandfather's United Way. You no, are. <laughs> it's not. We are challenging ourselves every day to stay relevant, to be as donor and account friendly as we can. The same kind of thing that, that you're doing here at Friendly Shepherd Lake. Well, we really appreciate all your hard work. So once again, the day of action, how can they sign up on the on the phone? Text us at action18 at 50503 or call us at 726-7000.
That sounds great. Well, we hope you get a lot, a lot of helpers, and it's a it's a great great way to volunteer, right? And and having had Cheryl Lemke on here, let's think ahead and hope we have good weather. Yes. Okay, Cheryl, you know your job. Okay. So once again, action eighteen to five o five o three, right? Correct. Good. Good luck, and we look forward to seeing you in May. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. We'll be back. Welcome back to the Friendly Auto Show. I'm Mason Brunsman, new car manager at Honda of Illinois, and sitting behind me is the 2018 North American Car of the Year, the Honda Accord. And for years and years, the Accord has been a great vehicle for us, not only here at Honda of Illinois, but Honda in general. But this year, it is something magical. Stay tuned, and I'm going to show you why. Standing in front of the all-new redesigned 2000. 18 Honda Accord. One thing you'll notice when you open the hood is a new system of engines. That's right, Honda came out with a new system of engines, a 1.5 liter turbocharge as standard on the entry level LX and an optional of a 2.0 turbo. But we're going to talk about the engine that the majority of buyers in the Accord are looking for, and that's the one that's going to be the most fuel efficient. And with this 1.5 uh, liter turbocharge engine, Earth Dreams from Honda, it's actually going to allow you to get 30 miles per gallon in the city and 38 miles per gallon on the highway. You'll also have a mode that you can switch it into called Econ Mode where you can maybe even get a little bit better mileage than what's posted. But the real treat is you're getting all that mileage with the power that comes with it. That 1.5 liter turbo is good for 192 horsepower, but 192 foot pounds of torque. And torque is where we feel that acceleration. And I can assure you, not only is this quicker than the older one, it's also quieter as well. You'll also notice everything under the hood of the new cord is very clean and easy to get to. Things such as your battery don't require extensive use of tools to get plastic coverings or off in the event that you need to jump start or change out that battery. Everything for your basic maintenance is easy to get to and it's also color coded. Um, some other things that are very nice about the Accord and let's face it with this vehicle you're not going to have a lot of maintenance but the stuff you like to do and check yourself you're going to be able to do it. You'll also notice that now standard on all new 2018 Honda Accords is what we call our Honda Sensing suite of safety features. That includes things such as braking mitigation which in the event that you're going to get in a collision and maybe you haven't hit the brakes or you don't even notice that that collision is imminent this vehicle can actually bring you to complete stop. You have lane keeping assist, which can actually not only help you guide yourself in the lanes, it can actually steer the vehicle into the lanes for you as well. Another great feature that all 2018 Honda Accords will be equipped with when equipped with a sensing package is adaptive cruise control with low speed follow and that's really the key. This vehicle not only can do the regular adaptive cruise control where you set your cruise control at 65, 70 miles per hour. Anytime somebody gets in front of you and that vehicle slows down, this vehicle will actually sense it and slow it down automatically for you. So you no longer have to turn off that cruise control and reset it as time goes. Another great feature with that is the low speed follow. It can actually follow that vehicle in front using the adaptive cruise control all the way to a complete stop without you ever hitting the brake whatsoever. So some very cool new technology that again is standard on every single 2018 Honda Accord, something you're not going to find with a lot of the other manufacturers out there.